Well, I really wanted to work with this piece with things that are cultural heritage, basically. Things that are part of our intangible cultures. It's something that becomes a communal memory. This work is the final work in the series of seven works. And uh, it's a collection that I've called Defragmentation. And so defragmentation in the different works, each one is taking a different method and a different subject to explore different aspects of life in the diaspora, different aspects of uh, heritage, of living within multiple cultures and different aspects of the emotional states, the memories, the traumas and the dreams that are kind of transmitted between generations living in exile. This piece is characteristic of my work in terms of the way it's conceived. You know, I kind of started with the structure, the functionality, the physicality of it. And um, it's a very layered work. You know, we have the, the sound, the, obviously the sculpture, the, the visuals, layers within the sound, there's layers within the visuals, there's layers within the symbols. And in that way, I would say it's very typical. It's atypical in its feeling of solidity and permanence. And that's kind of something new that I've been wanting to explore for a while. And this was the opportunity to do it in this space where it was also somehow necessary to build something that could be immersive and which the audience can enter and be separated from the feeling a little bit, separated from this feeling of the museum, that they can step out of this white space and into a dreamscape. I built it so that I can't see out when I'm inside, so I feel that the waves, for example, are crashing over my head, uh, that I'm standing in a vat of olive oil when this yellow screen appears and the little bubbles rise. So this image is taken from both Norway and the Middle East, kind of representing landscapes, representing seascapes, water, motion, travel, the passage of time. For me, it was a very kind of central element that I wanted to bring this idea of time passing, of repetition, of generations into the work. And that's partly why the moon sequence is so central. So you have this uh, scrolling series of moons in different phases. The moon for me is also, it's also kind of a symbol of uh, fertility. And for me, there's, I've taken quite a lot of things that could symbolize fertility, can symbolize uh, growth, potential, things like the seeds in the pomegranate. They have a lot of different meanings, and of course, one of them is always the potential to become something new. Like, I never work with things that are simple or straight or forward or have a yes no answer or I'm very much in this idea of multiple possibilities of meaning of contradiction even so for me I mean I work with and especially in this work there's been a lot of symbols and in some cases, very sort of heavy symbols. But I find they're all things that are actually incredibly complex and layered and potentially full of meaning. And by placing all these things kind of together to make a whole, I think each image and each, you know, song or 
use of sound challenges the obvious interpretation of the symbol or of the image or of the thought. I'm trying with the images to show or give the feeling of travel, of distance, of restlessness, of change, of being a little off balance. And I want them to operate in this idea of a dreamscape, keep trying to repeat the idea of nighttime and darkness in the images. Because of course the sound is lullabies. And so I worked with a group of amazing women who have been willing to help me with this project and sing. And so they've sung songs, traditional well-known songs in both Arabic and Norwegian. We've worked together to try and switch those languages around, so to try and sing the very well-known Norwegian text to an Arabic tune and vice versa. I've been working with three, maybe four different generations of women for this project to have that feeling of, reiterate that feeling of, of time, of generation, of family connections. I think you can hear very clearly that there's two different musical traditions and two different languages. So I think from there, as a listener or as a viewer, you can already understand a lot. So it's the feeling of the familiarity of the song and the emotion of hearing these songs and of hearing normal people singing that brings a kind of intimacy to these songs. I think if I would translate and we just had the, the texts, I think that would kind of be lost. I wanted to use the sound also as a way to represent this a meeting of cultures, a certain nostalgia, which I think I could only be done with things that already resonate with people. So there's music that already exists. So the hands shown over and over in the video are the hands of the actual women who you hear singing. I wanted to show another aspect of uh, inheritance or shared culture through the body language, through the differences and similarities in how the hands themselves express thoughts and emotions. So these are filmed while we're discussing and also while actually singing. So I only show hands for a couple of reasons. Partly it's so that the the audience can actually, in a way, place themselves in the work or in the body. What we see of ourselves most is our own hands. Our hands are always in front of us. It's like how we interact with the world. It's our first contact with everything. 